When you dare to share, you break the silence. When you dare to share, you speak your truth. When you dare to share, you use the full strength of your voice. When you dare to share, it brings opportunity to own your story. So tell it, be heard, and at the same time, your sharing is someone else's learning, inspiration, motivation, empowerment, and hope. There's always an element to each of our stories that remains a secret. For some, we feel it's a dirty little secret. Dare to Share Your Untold Story exposes these secrets in a welcoming and positive way. I encourage each of you out there to dare yourself to share what is yours to tell. When we dare, it is the courage to do something really important. Let this be a vow to each and every single one of us that we take risk, we brave, confront, and face what is, while inspiring and empowering all communities. So let's break that silence and tap into mental beauty. This is Salima Jadavji, your podcast host, a practicing clinical social worker, and your mental wellness connoisseur. Welcome to the Dare to Share Your Untold Story podcast, episode number 41. A personal struggle and one single decision led her to success in the making. To all my fellow listeners, before we get started, I'm just dropping in a note to give you a heads up that this podcast might be emotionally triggering for you. We do invite guests onto the show who share openly about extremely difficult life moments with exposure and impact of what the struggles have been like. The intensity of each episode could have a variable impact on your emotional and mental well-being based on your own personal story. If at any point the topic becomes uncomfortable or upsetting to you in any way, please do not pressure yourself to listen. Instead, be kind to yourself, do some self-care, and perhaps give another episode a try. Today, I have the pleasure of introducing our amazing and daring guest, Lamina Matusala. Lamina is the founder and CEO of The Global Assist a growing organization that is taking outsourcing and virtual work mode to the next level by providing more employment and bringing solutions via virtual methods for small to mid-sized firms. She began Global Assist to address the growing market that thrives on outsourcing. The idea of connecting a business with a qualified resource from all around the globe through phones, computers, and tablets is an extraordinary venture because now employees can work from anywhere and customers and partners can succeed from anywhere. Due to Lamina's dedicated passion and experience, Global Assist is now acknowledged as the most trusted and reliable source for virtual businesses, as noted by Immigrant Women in Business, RTG Group, and directly from client testimonials themselves. In her spare time, Lamina likes spending time with family and friends, dancing, traveling and exploring different places, and cooking for her loved ones. Well, hello, Lamina. Welcome to the Dare to Share Your Untold Story podcast. Hi, how are you? I'm doing quite well. How about yourself? I'm absolutely fine. Amazing. Pleasure to be here. Yes, I'm so eager for today's chat, and I'm actually quite honored and thrilled to have you on the show today. And I'm so thankful that you bring with you the willingness to share and your support for taking the stance to help break barriers of mental stigma. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Amazing. So, Lamina, in case you're still wondering, the podcast here, it's all about bringing forward untold stories that people go through, whether the struggles are directly about mental health or something else. And we know that no matter what the story is, there is impact on one's own mental health in some way. And that part typically stays tucked away. So this platform here that I've created, it's aimed to serve in a way to break the barriers of mental stigma that have been conditioned in our society. So our raw conversation that we have today, I hope, will really be there to encourage others to share and tell what people typically have reservations for expressing. And so I'm bringing forward a trend and it's called the Mental Beauty Rethink. What comes to mind, Lamina, when you hear the Mental Beauty Rethink? Well, um, I I just want to refer back to our uh, first conversation when we 
uh, started uh, talking and we discussed about this idea. Um, I, I never thought, I, I mean, when I shared my uh, brief story with you, I, I never thought that this is something that has happened to me or I've given so much importance to to my mental mental health, mental stretch, the stress, what I've what I have gone through, um, sometimes it just happens that, you know, you just move forward and forget about whatever has happened. What's your journey mm -hmm. like? So when you repeat everything, when you tell to someone, it actually gives you more confidence and it motivates you to move forward. So that's what happened with me. So I, I just want to thank you for bringing this this particular topic. It's, it's um, from the day we've discussed, it's, it has become a very important thing to me as well. And and yeah, thank you very much again. Wow, that's so beautiful. Thank you very much for sharing that. Yeah, it's amazing to know how much we suppress things that we experience because we are so conditioned to move forward and deal with the next thing and the next thing and what's the next pressure and the next stressor and the next uh, performance measure that we have to look at that we sometimes don't take the time that we need to take a step back and really look at what is the whole experience that we've just had. And how is my mental health doing? And so I'm really glad that our conversation previously has helped you to take that pause and give you that opportunity to reflect. I, I really appreciate the sharing. Thank you. All right. So Lamina, I'm ready to dive in. How about you? Absolutely. I'm, I'm all go awesome. ready. <laughs> awesome. Just what I wanted to hear. <laughs> right. Okay. Lamina. This is our first question. Give us the newspaper headline of how you would title your untold story. How would it read? It will be from a mother to an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. From a mother to an entrepreneur. Can you say a little bit more about that? Right. Right. So, um, of course, I'm a mother. Uh, I have a child who's uh, nine years. I've been married uh, for the past 11 years now. and. I have been working, uh, I've got 13 years of experience. Yes, I was a mother as well. And there was, there was a tragic time uh, which me and my husband, we were, we were dealing. Um, at the age, when my son was five years, we, um, three years actually, we got to know that um, my uh, son has um, profound hearing loss mm -hmm. in both ears. And uh, this was a, a shock. To the family to complete family because there was no history of uh, such problem um and so uh, at the age of three we got to know that he has this problem and then um we we got him through all the treatments and we got him uh, equipments and then at the age of five um we we made this decision that you know hearing aids will not help him mm -hmm. to grow in life, to reach up to a level because he was just a child and there was so much more required for him to be stable in life. Mm -hmm. So much hearing is, is required. Mm -hmm. So uh, with the advice of doctors, we made this decision that he had to go through this surgery, which is called cochlear implant right. in both ears. And so we made this decision. Uh, I was in India. Uh, so we got him operated. And um, when you're small one is is i mean making this decision that you know you your, your child has to go through this surgery it, it requires a lot of preparedness so we 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 discuss with the family uh we spend almost all of our fortunes and um so that was the mental stress it was a whole journey we when i will say we it's it's both me my husband uh and my my family as well but it was mostly me and my husband who made this decision and um after that, when the the surgery was successfully done, mm -hmm. um, in in two years we made this decision that we need to migrate to Canada, and we came to Canada. We came in twenty nineteen, uh, April twenty nineteen, and here when we were all settled, we were mentally relieved. Uh, I made this decision of uh, you know starting my my business, and yeah, there. That's how, you know, everything got, got started. So, yeah, there's a whole, whole chapter. There is a whole chapter. There's this whole chapter that you talk about, and it's like a synopsis of from a mother to an entrepreneur, and you just kind of walked us through an entire skinny of this chapter. I just got curious about a few things. So your son, was was he five years old when he had the cochlear implant surgery? Yes. yes. Okay. 
And and then how old was he when your family immigrated to Canada? I was seven years okay. old at the time, yes. So he was seven years old. So now that's a huge piece because not only are we talking about your story, but we're talking about this journey of your son, your, your child, when they're so helpless and they're experiencing something so unique. And having to make a decision, though, like the one you made, to immigrate where you're leaving your supports behind and the three of you, the trio, yourself, your husband and your son, make new steps. I wonder what that was like for you to embark on that journey and make that decision that this is the best thing for us to do. Right. Um, so, yes, I mean, it was it was a huge decision and um, it was not not easy at all. Um, the first thing, we were always thinking about our son because uh, we we know, knew that that there was some sort of insecurity the moment we got to know that you know he has got this problem and even though in india is a is a developing country everything is there but we have almost spent most of our fortunes to got him to this, this surgery mm-hmm. and then we were also thinking that there is a future for him we want to get him a stable life uh, we both were struggling we were working as well so yeah i mean while discussing uh, with my husband, seeing what are the opportunities we have here in Canada and how we can give our son a better life. So, so you know, eventually it, it obviously took us two years to make that decision. Mm-hmm. We went through PR and, uh, you know, it was a whole, whole procedure. We also didn't want it to waste a lot of time because uh, this was a crucial stage for my son and I wanted to make quick decision. Mm-hmm. We don't want him to be behind in his studies and, and Although it took us two years, but but here we are and and we are very satisfied. And I'm curious, when you came to Canada and with some of the brief pieces that you mentioned when you were explaining details about, you know, how you came up with your newspaper headline, you know, it sounds like there was a bit of starting over that you had to do when you came to Canada. Can you speak about that start over feel? Um, So we, you know, we, we had a few recommendations from our friends we're in Canada, so we got to know the kind of opportunity we have in Canada and how we can start over everything. Um, so, so then we applied for PR, mm-hmm. uh, and then of course it, it is a long procedure. It, it takes one one point five years for the, the whole filing and and you know the documentation. So that was a whole procedure that we had to go through. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, that that was another piece altogether because we we just got relieved from from our son's surgery right. and uh, you know he, we had to um, uh, see I would I would just say that's why I said that I, I was a mother first my professional experience whatever I was going to office and my, I had my own um, uh, business experience that that was a different side and when I was at home it was a different story mm-hmm. altogether and my focus was absolutely different so. I was affected. Um, there was one more aspect back in India that I was doing really good where I was working. Right. I was at a director position um, in, a, in a company. Mm-hmm. And um, making this decision overall to leave everything behind and move to a different country and start all over was another um, major decision. Whether my professional career is important or my son's future is important because my, even if I if I'm doing good in my professional side, right. still it's not going to give that that good um, stability to my son because um, we wanted him to be socially, mentally happy and successful. And so when I was thinking in the long run, this 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 another this took me um, six months to make this decision whether or not we should be moving to a, a new country mm-hmm. altogether mm-hmm. or not. So yeah, that was one of the things. But yes, my my husband was very interested. He was he was very strong in terms with uh, this decision that he he wants to come here for his son, and so I I supported him. And and yeah, I mean, <laughs> like I said, everything uh, whatever happens happens for a reason. So he always did that, and yeah, it, it was destined to be here. So we you're here. Yeah, it sounds like everything did fall into place as it needed to, but it certainly started with that one single decision which was we need to move we're going to move we're moving to Canada right so it sounds like it's been such a journey with your son and being 
uncertain about what was what was happening to him and you know learning about the hearing impairments and learning what sort of needs he had and medical attention was required and the surgery that was needed and spending your fortunes and all of the pieces that you've just shared uh, and then this decision of like my career or my child my career or my child but how they're so interconnected as well and so Tell me more about how you were affected having gone through this journey of finding a way to support your son and your son's hearing. Um, Back at India, when, I mean, I I also want to go a little back. We were new parents and he was the only child. Mm -hmm. And um, first we observed that he was not talking. We we thought that, you know, uh, our parents or some some family members advised that, you know, uh, boys, they speak a little late. Some children, they speak a little late. So you don't have to worry. get him admitted to preschool he'll be all fine uh, he was two two and a half he went and he started going to school but I don't I wasn't able to see any improvement so when at the age of three we um, we got to know we got him tested uh, we, mm-hmm. we got him entire audiology test we got to know that he's got this this problem um, then again of course we were taken aback the whole world was upside down I was definitely mentally affected my my whole family was was affected. Uh, I can't cannot even express at this point how I must have felt. Um, I've overcome every every pain or every um, emotions because now I see I see everything is good. But yes, there was a time. Right. And then I had to um, you know stand back uh, because I cannot uh, keep questioning God or or you know, why this happened to me, I had to, um, I had to uh, stand on my own and start my own research. So I, me and my husband, we studied a lot about uh, this, this problem, what, um, you know, how the whole hearing works, how, um, how hearing aids are going to work for him. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, so there was a lot of studies, we got into this, this whole procedure entirely and before even we we uh, made this decision for um his surgery we did a lot of research mm-hmm. you really immersed yourself in the whole process of like okay let's study this together let's learn about what hearing impairments and impediments are about and what are the supports he needs what's the medical attention he requires and what are the options and possibilities and what's the pros and cons like that's what i'm hearing you say that you guys really immersed yourselves Right, because it was not just one day decision. No. First, it was finances. Mm-hmm. Second, it was you know throwing our son to to any uh, surgery was. I mean, I was never in favor of uh, doing that. Although we were advised when he was at the age of three that he should. This is the best solution for him. But because we made a mistake, I would admit that we made a mistake because we were new parents. And when we were discussing about this um, solution from from. Uh, doctors that get, getting him this uh, surgery or th- getting him implants at the age of three is the best decision, best solution. We, we were not sure. Right. Uh, first, it was happening um, for the first time in our family. And, and then, of course, it was an expensive mm-hmm. one. Uh, so we took our time. We thought that maybe we'll start with the hearing aids and, and see how it goes. He started responding. I, I used to take him to speech therapies to de- develop his, his um, speech right. and he was doing good he started doing good I could see him improving every day but but um, there was a stage uh, when one of the doctors they they reminded us again that you know with the help of no matter how expensive hearing aid you're gonna buy for him he will be at a certain level mm-hmm. and cochlear implants are gonna uh, really uh, help him because there's there's this myth that you know you just want to hear what is around you but there's beyond um, there are noises at the from the atmosphere there are uh, trees there are other sounds which is very important for a child right. who should who, who should know it it is not um, like you know he he just should be hearing his his parents and people around mm-hmm. him there, are, there there's there's lot lot more right. especially when the child is growing so then we understood everything and then we had to make this a strong decision so we um decided that you know he has to go th- to this surgery mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. thank you for sharing about all of those details of how you were affected you know lamina when people come to see me for therapy individuals they typically they tend to be in one of three places some are getting started some are in the middle and some are looking back 
So what part of the journey would you say that you're in? Would you say that you're at the beginning, in the middle, or looking back? Well, I would say I'm in the middle mm -hmm. right now. And so what do you want to want to remember about the process up to this point in your healing journey? I don't know. I mean, um, it, it was um, it, it was a turmoil. We every day dealing with the with the situation. He he's my only. I mean, I, I don't know how to express this uh, this thing, but um, all when I go back, when I see myself, I I see that I'm I'm a lot more stronger person. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot, and uh, with with my own experiences, um, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and I did it because of my child. I wanted to be strong because I knew that if I am strong, or if my husband is strong, we we will make sure that we give everything. To him what he deserves mm -hmm. and if i am depressed if i am demotivated not willing to do anything then I, i i don't think i will be able to give that confidence to my son and he will be depressed as well so i didn't wanted to give him that kind of example so i decided that i have to forget everything um we're very we, we were grateful that we got this opportunity uh science has has developed a, a lot they came up with this this new equipments for uh, children like with this disability and and now they're able to you know do things on their own they're independent right. so we had to look forward mm -hmm. so, so that's that's what i think i have changed in myself it really sounds like when you were sharing all of those details that um it's like your son was your motivator he was your anchor to help keep you going it's like you didn't lose sight of what you were doing and the purpose behind it And you reminded yourself on a daily basis, no matter how painful it was, you, you wanted to find a way to keep going for your son. Right. I mean, there was one one thing as well that I wanted to share. Mm -hmm. um, when I used to take my son to the therapies, I used to see other kids, um, you know, some, I mean, the condition of other kids was so bad that, you know, there were some autistic um kids they have this sight problem speaking problem mm -hmm. some mental issues as well and so you know seeing them and seeing the mothers they were they were so so courageous they were so strong that also used to inspire me mm -hmm. that you know if they can do it i can too what you see you take an example and then you try to improve yourself right take what you see and learn from it yeah and so that was also another like learning piece for you to kind of keep you in check. And so what would you say that you're grateful for with encountering this journey of your untold story with your son's hearing challenges and everything that has happened? First of all, I'm really grateful to God. I, I, I never complained when I got to know I was upset, but yes, I was, I was always, um, I mean, I'm, I'm especially grateful to God that, You know, uh, whatever challenges he has given, at least he, he gave us the strength to overcome. I'm grateful for my family, my husband, that, you know, they were with me and we were in, we were um, together in this. So we were able to overcome this this problem and, 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 then, uh, and my son, for sure. He's the strongest, smart child and I'm lucky to have him. Mm, that's beautiful. Your son is strong and smart and... You have shown him that he can overcome anything. Absolutely. Wonderful. So, Lamina, I'm curious about how your untold story has affected your mental health. I mean, I think that you have started to share a few pieces with me, like there was a moment where you might have questioned God, or you might have been wondering, like, why is this happening to me? I also heard you talk about a number of worries and fears. But yeah, I'm just really curious about how your mental health was affected what impact would you say did it have on you like what was that turmoil like you know the part that we don't always talk about what was that like for you well um of course um uh, i don't know how to express my mental health at that time mm -hmm. it, i was you can say i was in depression mm -hmm. but I, and i um, i love working so much i have been working for so long when i was pregnant with him when you know he was delivered um i just took a little break and then i again started working i loved working mm -hmm. but when i got to know about him um this 
I mean, I, I just thought that I would leave everything and I don't want it to go to office and speak to anyone. Mm. And uh, so uh, there was a lot of um, struggle. Then we have this responsibility of, um, you know, taking him to speech therapy every day. I saw him struggle, struggling, then learning words, um, how, you know, I had to practice with him uh, saying each mm. words and from words to sentences, mm. every growth. So um, I used to feel demotivated sometimes. There were, I mean, I, I was not successful when, 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 when we talk about his, his growth and, um, um, you know, uh, his learnings. It was not one day thing. It, it, it took, uh, it was a gradual thing. Mm. I had to, uh, we had to spend, um, it, it, it has been years. So every day was a struggle. Every day was a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, some days were happy. Some days were, were sad. Right. So yeah, that, that was a kind of uh, mental state I would say um, I was in. But yeah, we, we just overcome everything because of the support of the family. It's so great that you had supportive family. And it sounds like you were able to anchor that support you received and you were really part of each growth moment for your son. Absolutely. And, you know, in a private conversation, we touched upon a little bit about this idea of family planning. Are you able to share any more about that today? Right. Um, so, like I mentioned, my son is uh, nine mm -hmm. and it took us almost from three years till when he was five and then another one year when he was still six. We weren't able to plan anything because we were all focused about him. Right. So, that was another time. And when you know now i can say that he's all okay but there was a time when i um i stopped thinking about having another child mm -hmm. and you know now it is it is it is already too late that i uh, and i also have this fear that what if we have a second one what what if he he will be coming with a similar kind of problem i mean i'm not worried about myself but i don't want my child to suffer anything like that so that's another fear that i have although i'm pretty okay now but yes this was definitely um the the fear uh that i didn't didn't want it to uh, you know go through that phase again right. and have another child so yeah and how did you work through that you know to have that fear because i'm hearing you clearly when you say like you know it's not about me and what i had to go through but i think part of it really is about you and what you had to go through because you had to do what you had, what you did in order for things to be how they are right now. You heavily contributed to your son's well-being and even for your mental resilience. But beyond that, I understand you're saying like, I, you know, if I was to bring a child into this world who might also be suffering in a similar way, I don't know if I would want that for that person. So I'm just curious as how you worked through that to, to come to the decisions that you have. Well, I don't know. I mean, uh... Because my concentration was so much on him that for a few years, even after he got his surgery, I I did not want to think about anybody else because I didn't want to divide my attention. I wanted to give complete attention because he required that attention at that mm -hmm. time. Uh, you know, when when it comes to schooling, when it comes to therapies. So it, it was, I mean, I, I didn't want it to bring someone and then not pay him as much as attention as he needed at that point because he was just so little at that time. Right. Um, and then when when he was seven, eight, I did discuss with uh, one of our doctors and then our doctors advised us to... Because, um, see, we, we were not sure if he was born with this disability right when he was... I mean, it, it's, it's a born uh, problem or something happened in between. Nobody was sure. Even the doctors were not sure that because you don't have anybody in the heredity, we're not sure if he had this uh, problem right when he was born right. or some, something happened, you know, when he was maybe... It can cause through high fever or um, any problem in the brains, um, sensory issues. So, so the doctors were not sure. And so they advised me to go through a um, genetic test, which I didn't, uh, you know, because then we, we made this decision that we have to migrate to Canada and then um, we didn't pay much attention to go through a genetic test just to identify if, if, if at all we plan for the second one. Right. We'll, well, do, do we have any issues like that? Okay. So we didn't get a chance to go through that genetic uh, genetic test, but yes, this was always a confusion in me that 
you know, but if, if we made this decision, I don't want to go through that phase again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And, and we are still in question. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, right. Yeah. I understand. So then what, what are those key messages for the listeners of our show? What would you want them to know? Well, I just, um, I will just uh, share my experience that, you know, I was um, depressed, but then you should have somebody to look up to. You, you should have that kind of motivation. Uh, like I always, I mean, I, I mentioned in, in my journey, I had my son and my husband, especially my son. So I, I wanted to be what I am for my son. And, and uh, this is what I wanted to advise all the listeners as well, that you should have some kind of motivation to, to, to reach up to a level. Okay. So really have someone to look up to and, and find that motivation for yourself. What really brings, what ignites that motivation for you? And any, uh, anything else that you'd want uh, the listeners of the show to know in terms of, you know, an, an important message? I mean, it it is uh, it was very difficult for, for me to to share every piece, uh, like I mentioned in the mm-hmm. beginning. Um, sometimes we just we just go in the flow and we don't look back what we have uh, what we have gone through or what we have achieved. So it was very important uh, to actually tell your story to someone. And when I tell my story now, this is the first time that I'm telling my story mm-hmm. right from mm-hmm. the beginning. So it. It is making me more stronger now, and it's making me ha- ha- happy that you know I've I've come this this long way, and 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 yeah, it is. It I think from now on, I I will showcase myself as a more stronger person, and I can make more strong decisions. In my right, life. I like that. Showcase your strength. The more you share, the more strength you have. Absolutely, and I think that's what you do, and I I want to. Congratulate you doing such a fabulous job because this is really this will definitely make my life uh, better and, and I, I've just got another perspective because I I learned from myself a lot when I was talking about myself I talked mm-hmm. about my my mental weaknesses and um, some strengths now so uh, what I've I've changed. I've come a long way. I've changed myself a lot. So yeah, when when you talk about yourself to others, when you tell them, it it actually changes a lot of things and perspectives in mm-hmm. life. Well, thank you for saying those kind words and for sharing how this has been impactful to you. Because you know this is very much in line with the mission of what the podcast is intending to do, and that power of sharing and telling and how it actually opens up opportunity for yourself and also helps people realize that there's strength in sharing and that there's strength in telling your story and it is part of the healing process. Yes. Absolutely. Right. So I'm curious, Lamina, what would you say is your game changer inspiration that's close to you that really reflects your untold story? So... Is there like an inspirational quote or a book or an event or something that really spoke to you that kind of ignited that fire for you to know what you needed to do to make the shift that you made? Uh, Well, um, so when we came here, you know, I always wanted to have my own own business, right? When when we were in India, Mm -hmm. Um, uh, this was my, you know, kind of dream, but I did not get the opportunity I was working there I was settled so starting your own business is, is something not a regular person who is who's working uh, can make a decision so easily so when we came here um, you know first thing was that I was mentally um, stable that my son is here and he will get all the facilities required and and he's going to school there are some institutions were taking care of him, taking a regular check on him. So I'm, I'm mentally satisfied, mentally stable from that point. And then I got an opportunity to check what I want to become, what I want to do. So my husband really helped me and he really pushed me to pursue my dream of starting my own business. Mm-hmm. So I I, um, I also want to give, uh, you know, uh, tell you that I really saw these uh, wonderful uh, groups on, on LinkedIn immigrant women who are doing some great jobs and uh, you know they're running their own individual businesses and and that really motivated me to to do what I wanted to do and and yeah that's that's how I, I started my own 
now venture in 2019 and uh, it's, it's been three years we're we're still growing mm-hmm. you're still growing yet you've made so much success in the making right so it's fabulous Thank you. so what would be a cause or an organization that has been impactful to you on your journey that you would like to give a shout out to well, I'd like to uh, give a shout out to IWB, Immigrant Women in Business. Mm-hmm. That really motivated me. Mm-hmm. Um, it gave me a real example of how women from different countries, they come to Canada with, with a lot of dreams and they start at a small level and how they grow, how they meet people. So I was seeing a lot of social media activities and how they were so aligned and, and making uh, women so strong so that really motivated me and so I joined this group so I really want to thank them so so yeah uh, really to them and to my company for sure uh, Global Exist um, you know for making me uh, what I am right mm-hmm. now and uh, it was a small dream and now it's growing we have we've been able to give employment to 35 people right now and I feel so blessed at the time of pandemic where everybody was so depressed um, you know, people were losing jobs and we we gave them opportunity to work, be happy, stick with us and, and also get more and more people. So, so yeah, I, I feel so much happy about uh, giving happiness to people. Amazing. So a shout out to Immigrant Women in Business as well as the Global Assist. I love it. Thank you so much. So, okay. So how can people connect with you if they would like to? I mean, I know we've got some of your social handles uh, that we'll definitely put on the show notes page for you. But um, right, so, how can people connect with you? Right. So I'm available on LinkedIn. We do have our, our team, uh, social media team, who constantly, um, you know, come up with a lot of uh, good ideas to attract people to small businesses to mid-sized businesses mm-hmm. if they are uh, if they're looking for any kind of um, assistance. Uh, and, and so we are available on our social media accounts. Uh, we are available on, um, you know, you, you must have my email address as well yes. so they can any point of time connect to me. Okay, so we've got your email and we've got both of your, your LinkedIn handles. And would you like us to share your Facebook and Instagram handles as well? Yes, it's um, uh, it's called Global Assist, uh, a single name, Global Assist. That's the company page, and we're always available on chats. If we can, you can also visit our website, which is www.theglobalassist.com, and we are available on chats. So every anybody who has got simple question can just uh, drop in a message, and uh, we'll be uh, very easily we'll be able to connect. Amazing. With, with, uh, with people. That sounds lovely. That really sounds lovely. Wow. Lamina, guess what? You just dared yourself to share. Congrats. Thank you so much. How was it to put yourself in that hot seat? How was it? Oh, it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And um, I will keep repeating myself that I feel so great Mm -hmm. uh, saying everything what I've uh, whatever I have experienced to giving them all uh, these were thoughts and sharing this piece of information with somebody is a, such a strong feeling altogether. Mm-hmm. It, now, I mean, I feel so happy and, and relieved and relaxed. That's so amazing to hear. And Lamina, I am also really thankful that you provided me with this opportunity to interview you on this podcast and for you to share with such energy and enthusiasm and openness. It takes, honestly, it takes loads of courage to share such an important part of your life and with such vulnerability. I really admire how you found a way to bring your whole self to the conversation. It truly added so much more perspective and insight. So thank you for that deep conversation and for all the sharing, Lamina. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Amazing. So once again, Lamina, thank you for being part of Dare to Share Your Untold Story and helping to be a voice in breaking down the barriers of mental stigma. To all of our listeners, If you like what you've been hearing on this podcast and you want to be part of breaking down barriers of mental stigma, I invite you to go wherever you are listening to the episode and hit subscribe. Leave us a comment or a review of the episode and maybe how you relate to it. To learn more about what we offer, visit 
www.daretoheal.co. And if you are feeling ready and brave to share, please submit your story by visiting www.daretoshare.co. Thanks for joining in.